Hi, welcome to my live. So today I'm going to talk about how to shop for wardrobe curation for your personal style. Um, so there's two, so there's six criteria I'm going to discuss today um, on wardrobe curation and how to shop for it. Uh, so let's go over the very first thing about what you need to do when you are shopping for wardrobe curation. The very first thing you need to do is really Go with the intent of looking for what you actually need in your wardrobe. So it might be a uh, element of either like a color that you want to buy, you know. So let's just say um, you want to go sh buy green because you have something in your closet that you want to pair with something that's green. So <clears throat> you are going out shopping for something green, right? Whether it's a sweater, a dress, a coat, whatever it is. Your, I, your intent of going shopping is to look for something green. So always go with an intent of looking for something that will fit into your wardrobe. So it could be a design detail, it could be a color, or it could be a silhouette. So meaning that you might want to go out and look for a shirt with ruffles. So that's a design detail, the ruffles, right? And then... Like I said, like you might want to go and shop for maybe a pink sweater. So you go with the intent of shopping for something in a color. And then the other thing is <clears throat> you might be looking for a dress. So that would be a silhouette, right? So you would go with the intent of looking for certain things that will fit into your closet. So this way you don't really nearly go and shopping sprees and buy things that you do not need and do not fit into your wardrobe. The thing about what you're curation is you go shopping with intent of curating things that make sense to your wardrobe. So you're not listening to fashion influencers, you're not listening to the latest fashion trend, and you're not looking at ads for fast fashion. You are going with the intent of buying things that are specific to your wardrobe. Things that you are missing that you have been looking for. So always go with the intent of looking for specific things, you know. Um, so that's the very first criteria of shopping for wardrobe curation for your personal style. And then um, <clears throat> the other thing is because the fashion being the way it is, you're always introduced to new trends, colors, and whatnot, right? So how do you not shop for fashion trends? but still want to be current, right? So it might be that this fall, hot pink was all over the runway from Valentino, right? So maybe you want to add pink into your wardrobe. So you go out and you look for something pink. The other color, so there was four different colors, I think, that was shown on the runway um, for fall. So it, out of these four colors, you might decide that you want to incorporate one of those colors that is trending for the season but it will still make sense to you so you have to pick the color out of the four that makes sense to your personal style on clothes that you would wear like a color that you wear let's just say that hot pink is not a color that you would wear typically right so you wouldn't buy it um but aubergine was also a trending color teal was also a trending color so these are the things they have to factor in just because something is presented in the runway as trending, you have to decide that does it make sense to your wardrobe? Are you going to wear it just for this season and discard it next season? Or are you able to incorporate that color into your style that you could not only just wear this year, but two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. So it has to make sense cohesively to your wardrobe, you know, that things that you could make it cohesively in your wardrobe. So just be very careful when you are picking out what the fashion trend is, is to how to incorporate it in the way that it makes sense to you. You know, and there's also whatever trend people are saying, whatever fashion trends, you know, fashion influencers, a lot of people just talk about fashion trends, but they don't tell you actually the, the key thing of not wasting your money on it. The way not to waste money on it is to really think about, are you going to wear this color two years from now, three years from now? And how is it cohesively 
fitting into your wardrobe. Just be very, very mindful that when you are going shopping, that you go going shopping with the intent of buying specific things that is cohesive to your wardrobe. Things that you need, things that you are missing, things that you would like to add in that makes sense to your wardrobe as a whole. So this way when you are creating outfits, it's a very easy mix and match system for you. Um, so that's point one. So point two is very, very crucial. It's when you are picking a style that you want to buy, make sure that you try it on with similar things from your wardrobe. Let's just say that, for example, <clears throat> you want to incorporate a teal sweater into your wardrobe. So you have a navy skirt, you have a black pair of pants, you have a navy trench coat. Find things that are similar to what you have in your wardrobe Wear it with what you have in your wardrobe. So this way, you can, when you are trying and stuff, it makes sense that you are going to wear it in a way that mix and match into your wardrobe. So this is why it's very important that when you are trying on clothes, make sure that you are trying clothes in a way that is outfits. You know, you could create like multiple outfits. Things like, for styling, things like that, that it makes sense for you to mix and match in your wardrobe, you know, with pieces that already exist. So you're not going out to buy, you know, five things when your only intention is only to pick up one thing to add into your wardrobe. If your intent is, I'm going out to pick a green sweater or a pink dress, you are buying specifically that. You don't come home with another another navy trench coat because you already have a navy trench coat. You don't go have buy another pair of black pants because you already have good black pants in your wardrobe. So be very mindful that when you're adding something into your wardrobe, it's something that you want that is as a whole for your wardrobe, something that you're missing or something that you need that will create more outfits for you with what existing in your closet, the styles that you already have. Um, so I want to be very, very, you know, um, careful at emphasizing this is just going to shop for only things that you need and be mindful that you are not going willy nilly and buying things just because it's the trending thing and you need to replenish it because it doesn't make sense for you to waste money on a style that you already have in your closet. You know, I, I think like a lot of people buy a lot of duplicates of what they already have in their closet because it might be that <clears throat> um, that style is, so let's just say a black pair of jeans, right? So someone says, okay, skinny jeans are in right now. Um, bootleg cuts are not not in, but those bootleg cut jeans they look good on you. So and the silhouette that you have, the skinny jeans do not look good on you. So why would you waste money on buying a pair of skinny jeans just because someone says it? That person who's telling you to buy the pair of skinny jeans, they don't know you from a hole in the wall. They don't know you and your lifestyle. They don't know your body shape. So don't really don't listen all willy nilly about fashion influencers telling you to buy this and that because it's the end thing. It's just a waste of money and most likely next year the next you know cut of jeans will be in and the skinny jeans will be out. So you're wasting money on things that only that look good but when you are wearing it it does not it's not flattering on you. So just be very mindful of when you are spending money that you get a lot more wear out of it. Um so that's point number two is Go into your closet, I mean, go into the fitting room with the intent of trying on outfits that um, you could create multiple outfits from with existing styles already in your closet. Again, you know, when you are going to try on stuff in the fitting room, make sure that you are bringing in styles to create outfits when you're trying it on. So this way you can determine whether it actually fits into your wardrobe or not. And you can you create outfits with what is existing in your closet. So you are not tempted to go out and buy things that you don't have additionally. So this way you are shopping and shopping, buying stuff and discarding what you already have, those good styles in your closet. So just be very mindful of that. And then the third thing is, whenever you're in the fitting room, I suggest that you really go and, okay, so, 
Yeah, I'm going to show you. So again, like when you are going into the fitting room, make sure that you pull outfits, you know, into the fitting room when you are trying on stuff. So you're not just really nilly trying on clothes that you cannot create outfits. And remember I said that, you know, when you're trying stuff, it's to make sure that you are pairing it and creating outfits and style and things like that. So this way, when you are trying things on, you could kind of see how it cohesively fits in with your wardrobe. And the third thing is to make sure that you take pictures of yourself in multiple angles, a front view, a side view, a back view, to make sure that the style looks proportionally and is flattering on your body. Here's what I mean, is to take a front view, take a side view, take a back view. So this way you can tell that the, the style actually looks good on you. And it's not just a style that you fancy because everyone says it's the in thing or whatnot. You know, so it's just a matter of really going out and like taking pictures of when you're in the fitting room, get a 360 view of how the outfits will look on you, you know, proportionally. Because I think a lot of times, you know, a lot of people just try and stuff, they look at it, you know, and it might not be how they would typically wear that particular style. And a lot of times you try trying the top with the pants that you already have that you're wearing, but you really should try it on with things that are existing in your closet, whether it's a skirt, a dress, a pair of pants, something to create multiple outfits that you could kind of see if that piece makes sense with what you have cohesively in your wardrobe. Um, so that's point three is to take the 360 picture. Um, and then <clears throat> The other thing that you need to look at is the material that it's made of. Um, so again, it goes back to really looking at the care label to see what the material is made of. Um, and a lot of times, like, you know, it could be made of linen, it could be made of cotton, it could be made of um, a whole array of, of fabric, right? So you have to kind of look at the content. And then when you look at the contents, determine whether it's a good quality fabric or not. Um, I had done a, a previous live explaining about the material and the, and the craftsmanship. You could check it out. I think it's episode five if you want to see that. It's on YouTube in case you missed it last week. Um, I talk about material and craftsmanship. And I also talk about, you know, um, stitches per inch, the right construction you know, the different materials and things like that. Um, so that's in that episode five. You can go check it out. And then um, this is really determines on what you are spending your money on. And I just want to be very clear that in wardrobe curation, it's not about, you know, spending like the cheapest amount of money possible to get the most amount of clothes possible. It's really about thinking about what you're spending your money in, you know, how long you want to have that style, how it, how are you going to wear it cohesively in your wardrobe as a whole, you know, for your personal style. And this is what this whole series is about, is to teach you how to, you know, develop your personal style, you know, what to look out for, how to dress the body proportions, and then this episode is the how to shop for it, because wardrobe curation is a long, um, it's a long game of investing, looking for things to invest in for your wardrobe for the long run, you know. And I know that a lot of people, you know, have made comments and saying like, oh, you know, I don't have that much money for this or that. But the the same people, I've gone to their, to their social media accounts and a lot of these people typically go and replenish on fast fashion at the amount of times they replenish and the amount of money that they spend on replenishing, if you really think about the cost per wear, it's not, they're actually spending a lot more money in the long run. And I'll explain cost per wear in a little bit. Um, so, um, so again, like really look at the material that's used to determine whether a style is worthwhile to spend the money on, right? Um, and then five is the workmanship and the workmanship is really, you have to really turn the garment inside out to look at it. 
And here's what I mean. There's like certain finishings. Okay. So the very first thing I need to inform you is that um, we have a term called stitches per inch, right? So the thicker the material is, the less stitches that you will need, you know, per inch in the stitching. The finer the material is, the more stitches you will need for that fabrication. So when you are, the bare minimum you should look out for is the heavier the fabric, you don't need, you don't need a lot of stitches. That's why sometimes it's, sometimes it's 10 stitches. So sometimes if you look at denim, I think it's like either like 10 to 12 stitches per inch, depending on how heavy the denim is. And sometimes if you look at like a heavy, um, twill coat and things like that, like a duck coat or whatever. So you will see less stitches. But if you go into like a silk fabric, you know, like chiffon or georgette, you will see the stitches will be like 14 to 16 inches, just so that it will hold the fabric, it retains it better. And they don't have the slippage of holes in it. So the finer the fabric, the more stitches it should have. And a lot of times if you go to look at men's shirts, you'll see that they have a minimum of 14 stitches per inch because the fabric is finer. So that's the thing that you need to keep in mind. And the finer the silk, the more stitches you'll need. And, the, and there is like a, a standardized, you know, stitches per inch, the industry that we use. Um, I think that the finest I've ever seen it is um, on the silk fabric that's 18 stitches per inch but it's a really fine fabric and but usually like if a fine fabric 16 inches is the most standardized stitches per inch that you'll need um, and again like in fabrications I did this week, um, lesson last week about you know the yarn twist and the filaments so you could check out that video from last week on YouTube um, okay so again, like the, the, the workmanship. So in a typical sweater, you know, you'll find this as a standardized stitch, right? It's a fully fashioned stitch of a sweater. So this is the way that they clean finish it. It's not the most high end sweater finish. There are higher ends. There is um, a, I know the finest stitch, the gauge is, I think, I'm not sure if it's dirt. I think it's 32, um, the 32 gauge of a very fine sweater, but those are very like high luck, high luxury fashion brands that, that do it. But usually like the gauge is 18, so 18 gauge yarn is where you have like a high end sweater. And they're not finished typically like this. They are seamless. So you don't see any seaming in it. And there's a machine, um, that the industry uses is called it's from this company called Stoll. Um, they do very fine finishing, and a lot of people don't understand that they look at the sweater and they think like, "Oh, it's so basic," you know. But those basic sweaters actually require a lot more um, finer machineries, and those machineries are very expensive to do. And the way they they knit is not as quick as some of these um, other. Um, sweater uh, machine machines so that's a thing to consider you know in the workmanship and you and so if I'm not talking about sweaters these are some of the finishings that you have to look out for you know so um, if something is fine you know you go and you use a French seam that's a clean finish seam something in a knit we use a flat lock a stage stitch basically holds the, the seams together. This is a very fine um, baby roll hem. These are bound seams, you know, and this way of finishing the bound seam is a very expensive way of doing it. Typically, um, the bound seams that you see out there, they fit through a, a foot, through a machine, and it's a very fast way to do it. This is a three-step process to do this bound seam. The other way of doing it is a single um, stitch way. So that's the difference between knowing the difference between a high end finish just because it's bound seam. The bound seam is finished differently. Um, so 
this you will see in a lot of this is the bare minimum that you should expect from luxury brands and things like that um okay um so and then the other one is um a uh, hand fell seam so there is a machine that does this so a lot of times now you see double face they have this finishing so it's a clean finished seam there's a machinery that does it you know which is a lot faster than the hand way of doing it this used to be done in the really high-end like couture is doing the seam by hand and the way you do it is you razor the fabric you fold you hand fold it in and then you steam it you stitch it by hand and then you do the same thing on the other side so it's very labor intensive there is a machine now that, that does it but still it's still a um high it's still a high-end finish you know so this is the stuff of the stuff that you need to know the difference between you know how um fast fashion brands are doing it or or moderate price brands are doing you know some of the finishing some of it's machine done and some of it is hand done and even though it's um, machine done there are machine ways of doing it as a single operation and there's a machine way of doing it as three or four steps so when you do it three or four steps it's a lot more labor intensive so that's why where the cost comes in where people ask like why is that designer style so expensive a lot of it has to do with the way the finishing of the garment is this is all labor and I've talked about this many many times you know that I'm not for slave labor and a lot of these fast fashion brands if you're paying like especially we know the very famous one you know that is starts with an S and ends with an N I'm not gonna name it you know what the brand is so that brand if they're selling things for under ten dollar includes material includes sewing includes shipping includes like overhead if you are paying that much how much slave labor is involved in making that style that you're buying for under ten dollars so that's why I always want to I'm very curious because I know um, even though it's cheap material and they do um, like cheap finishings it's still at the end of the day labor and material so um, I just want to emphasize that okay and then um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, <clears throat> cost per wear so this is not how normal people tell every time I see this cost per wear out there you know how other people are doing it I'm gonna tell you this the way they're doing it is with the disposal mindset you know because it's not how you should be thinking about it so this is the proper way of thinking about how to do um, the formula of how to do it I've have a video on TikTok for it. It's you know you have to think about um, the cost of wear is how many times do you plan to wear that style in a span of a month, right? So if I have this coat, you know, um, the amount of times I will wear it in a month is I will wear about half the time in a month, right? So I would say I wear s about sixteen times in a span of a month. So I know that the wearability of it is about um, five times five months out of the year that I will wear this coat so it becomes 80 times a year I will wear it so this coat is at $2,198 I wear it 80 times a year so it becomes $36,063 per year that I'm wearing it right but I plan to have this coat at least a minimum of five years so if I wear this amount of times, divided by five years I, I have it, that I'm going to be wearing it, then the cost becomes $7.33. That's the way I think that people really should really think about it, is that mindset is not how many times you actually, because a lot of times I see out there is, how many times do you imagine yourself or you think you're going to wear? It's not really practical that way because you know you have to think about your lifestyle like okay in a span of a month 
in this coat, you know, during the winter month. How often would I wear it? Would I wear it about half the time, half the month? Or where I alternate, you know, with another coat that I have, right? I'm gonna wear it three days out of the week, and then two, and then maybe two other days I will wear another coat, or maybe the weather change and I would need a lighter coat or a heavier coat, right? And then the weekend I might only wear it one other time, so I might not wear it the entire weekend. So if you think about those factors and actually how many times you wear in the course of a month, and because in this coat I know that I will only get you know, five months out of the year to wear it. You know, I will wear it in, maybe in the early spring, I wear early fall. I would not wear it in the summer months, right? And when the weather is hot, I would not wear it. And when the weather is cold, I would not, I would wear something, I would need something heavier, right? So that's the kind of thing that you need to think about, you know? So typically you have to really think about how many times you wear in a span of a month and how, What's the likelihood of how many months you are going to be able to wear that style? So that's the thing you factor in. And because we're talking about wardrobe curation and you're investing in something that for a long, like a long haul, right? That you could wear like multiple years. And when I typically buy styles, I think about, I at least want to wear it at a bare minimum of five years. And usually, I have styles that are 10, 20 years old. So I, you know, I still wear those styles if they fit me. If they don't fit me, I either resell it or gift it to someone else. Do something with it. So this is something that, and usually those styles that you invest in, right, that you send money on, the resale value of it is going to be higher, you know. So you have your cost per wear of how often you wear it. So you're getting your return investment in how many how many wears you are getting, right? In your in your everyday wardrobe. But in addition to that, you're also getting like money when you sell it off. So this is another way of thinking of wardrobe curation and why it's worthwhile to invest in. It's instead of something that's fast fashion. Cause the, I don't know if any of you gone to thrifting nowadays you know the thrift stores and how much fast fashion there is that you have to sort through i mean i haven't gone you know in such a long time you know i think even before covid i've stopped going because i already see that fast fashion has been a dumping ground for it but even more so nowadays because you know the amount of um the amount of fast fashion that people are consuming or dispose of fashion is just crazy. And even to a point that people don't understand the value of, you know, something that's quality and not. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to answer some questions for you and th from the live. And then if you have any questions, feel free to drop in a comment and I will do my best to answer your, your questions. And if not, then I'm going to wrap up. So let me go and see uh, your questions. Are there any brands that carry more A-line skirts and dresses? Um, I think that if I think off the top of my head, um, I think Kate Spade carries A-line dresses and skirts. Um, and I think that, uh, shoot, I just had it in my head. I think like, um, I think BC and BG some, have some of it. I know that uh, if you go to Banana Republic, I think they also have some A-line um, brands that they they do have some A-line skirts and dresses. So there's an assortment of brands that you could go to in a moderate price point. So I'm kind of giving you like a more moderate price point because I know that if I start telling you the designer brands, you know, um, some of it, some a lot of it is going to be out of price range. But if you really want to invest in um, any brand, um, you could drop me a comment, you know, in my DM, I could, you know, maybe help you there, but on top of my head, it's just like, um, I can't think of it be beyond that, but I hope that helps. Uh, okay. So question, how do I know whether to invest in something or not? Um, so how to decide whether you want to invest in something or not is, how long do you plan to have that style, right? So if it's a style that fits into your personal style, 
you can create multiple outfits with the styles you have in your closet and then you plan to have it for at least a minimum of five years then it's a worthwhile investment for you because number one is you're getting multiple looks so you're getting a lot of cost per wear out of it you're getting a lot of mileage out of the style um then if you're talking about like again if you think about long term of you having that style it's the longer you have it the more you wear it the less cost per wear it is and then if it fits in your personal style then you want to wear it because it's something that you that you identify with that makes you feel good about wearing it so that's the three things I would suggest that if you are looking for something to invest in is these three criteria is um, can you create multiple outfits? Does it fit your personal style? Do you plan to have it for more than five years? So these are the three things that I would say that you should think about if you want to invest in something that's a high ticket price item, you know, because your cost per wear in the long run would be a lot less. And then you don't have to keep buying styles that replenish, you know, or styles and you won't be susceptible to buying trendy styles or things that do not fit into your wardrobe. Um, flat lock. I got something similar. So flat lock is used. Um, so there is, flat lock is a knit, it's a stitch for knits. So you typically find it in leggings or athletic wear. I guess like if you go look at Lululemon or Athletica and things like that, you will find this stitch quite a, a lot. It's the right stitch for um, knitwear, for especially like athletic wear. Um, you'll find it a lot. Uh, but the spelling is slightly different. It's flat lock. This is the stitch. It, it is. Um, so this is what the stitch looks like. And you find it in knitwear a lot. It is called flat lock. So um, you could Google it, and I'm sure you'll find it. Um, some examples. Uh, okay. So, okay. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Okay. What is your favorite designer brand and least, especially for bags? Okay. I'm not a bag person. I can tell you that for sure. I don't subscribe to it. I don't like the it bag in this because for me, I'm very rough with my bags and my bags need to be functional. And a lot of these bags, the way they're presented, like a lot of influences, the way they present it is more incentive for me not to buy it because I'm not sure about you, but I like to use my bags and I like to wear my clothes. I'm not going to you know, buy a Birkin bag to have it sitting on a shelf on display. Like, I don't, my home isn't a, mu isn't a museum. It's actually a livable space, you know. And for me, like, clothes is meant to be lived in. You know, my fashion is supposed to be reflecting my lifestyle. So for me, I don't really see the point of getting a designer bag. Um, and for the, for fa favorite designer brand or least favorite I don't really have anything like that because I'm more true to styles and fits so I've said in a previous life where you know I know that I know this to be true because I've been working in fashion for over 30 years so usually typically in a fashion brand the life cycle of the fashion team it goes through like a three to five year cycle you know so Sometimes, like, a designer for the, the design team, a, assistant associate designer, whatever, not the head designer, they might change, you know. So I will follow more of that designer, where they're going, you know, what they're doing. Okay, case in point, when Jenna Lyons was with J. Crew, I really liked J. Crew then, you know, and then she left, and I didn't like J. Crew anymore. You know, so again, like J. Crew was one of my favorite brands, and it also became my least favorite brand. So I'm more like into the aesthetic and the styling, and to see if it really fits into my style and the fit and everything. Like, what do, what is it in it for me? And that's the way you need to look at it when you are going to shop for fashion. Is what is the brand giving you? How are they servicing you? 
you don't need to service the brand. You know, you don't need to be loyal to a brand if they don't if they don't cater to you and they don't have you as a target customer. I've said this like every brand have a target customer, and if they're not catering to you, then find someone that does cater to you. You know, I really believe in that. So that's why I don't back any brand exclusively. I you know, and I happen to be one of those people like I love shopping. I go shopping all the time. But you'll be hard pressed to see me coming home with more than one shopping bag of one thing or two things, if at, if at all, you know, because I always go with the intent of I'm looking for a specific thing. If they don't have it, I don't want it, you know. So I will go try on clothes, and sometimes, yeah, the clothes are fun, but I can't create outfits with it. It makes no rhyme or reasons with whatever I have in my closet. I won't buy it. It's just that simple, you know, so I'm not very susceptible to, you know, fashion influences tell me to buy this or that, because you have to convince me, like, you want to wear that style more than once. Show me that you can wear that style more than once. Show me that you can wear that style multiple ways. Show me how it would fit another body type, that kind of thing, you know, because, yeah, I understand it looks great on you. You know what styles work for you. But what works for you, it might not work for me. Because you might be a pear shape. Meanwhile, I'm an apple shape, right? So, like, what works for your pear shape does not work for my apple shape. So, I wouldn't buy it. I would say, okay, it looks nice. I appreciate it. I enjoy looking at you with that style. But I would take elements. Like, it might be like, oh, I really like that print. I like that color pairing. I like the way... She styled this this outfit. I like the pairing, so I would take elements of that, but I would not cookie cut it that look, you know. So that's the thing that you need to be mindful of when you are listening to fashion influencers. What are they actually trying to pitch to you, and how does it really fit to your personal style? Um, okay, how do I stop buying? How do I stop impulse buying something on sale if? If it's cheap, okay. Um, so if you buy, this is a disposal mindset kind of thing, right? So let's just say that you bought a sweater, right? It's on sale. It was, it was originally, um, let's just say the sweater was originally like one seventy five per se, right? It was full price at one seventy five. Now it's on sale for fifty dollars, and you want to buy it, right? So. You have to think about it. Does that style is that style gonna be something that you could kind of incorporate into your wardrobe, right? And then does the style fit into your personal style, right? So, and then the third thing is how many times are you gonna wear that style, right? So let's just say that if you bought that style, but you only let's just say that it's a sequin skirt per se, right? It, it was. 100, it was 250 and now it's 75, right? But if you bought that sequin skirt and you only wear it twice, like, it's not, think of, do the math. So then it becomes 30, 3750 per wear that if you only wear it twice, right? Versus something that if you pay, so let's just say that you, buy a pleated skirt, right? It was one seventy five. You bought it one seventy five. But let's just say that you that pleated skirt that you bought, you an average wear it in a month four times, right? And in the span of a year you only could wear it maybe six months out of the year, right? So four times six is twenty four. Right? So then if you wear it for twenty four if you wear it 24 times and then you have it for like six years, right? So then 24 divided by six, it, be it becomes $4 per wear versus that sequin skirt that you want to buy is $37.50 per se, right? So $37.50 versus $4. So that's the kind of math that you kind of need to do. It's really, it's really thinking about the cost per wear. How often are you going to wear that style? Does it make sense 
that you buy it just because it's on sale. Because I get a, a com I did the 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 video when I asked what was the thing that would stop you from impulse buying, and this was one of the comments that I got a lot of. So again, think about is it really is it really a sale? Even if it's like, even if something is, because so I get a couple comments to say like, um. I bought it, if it's $20, you know, I'll buy it. But if it's $20 and you only wear it once or not even at all, then it's $20 that you actually spend like, the cost per wear is a lost investment at $20. If you wear it once, it's still $20 per per wear that you're getting out that that one style that you bought for $20 that you thought it was a steal. So is it really a steal on your part? Or is it a really a steal on the fashion brand side of it? Because they're making you spend twenty dollars something that you're not gonna wear. So you have to think about they're basically robbing you. <laughs> if that's the way you if that's the way you are buying with the mentality like it's on sale, I buy it, but I'm not gonna wear it. So think about that. Um anyway, uh okay. If it's a big ticket item, how do I know? How do I know to buy it or not? Again, the big ticket item is um, how many times you're gonna wear it. Can you incorporate it into your everyday wardrobe, right? And how long are you gonna have it? You always just need to think about like wardrobe curation is curating something for the long run. You're not impulse buying for something that's trendy or something that's in now that is going to be out, you know, next year or two years from now, you know, it's because then your cost per wear becomes expensive um, if you do the math. And I think like if you see, I show you the math of how to do the calculation and you'll see like the longer you have in style, the more you wear it, the cost per wear becomes a really, um, like it's not that much as you think, you know. And a lot of times I see this these cost per wear. It's like I wouldn't buy for I wouldn't buy because thirty six dollars. But I'm like, are you gonna just wear it for a year? Because you, that's what you're telling me. It's thirty six dollars because you're only thinking about it wearing for a year. So next year, are you gonna discard it and buy something new? So you're gonna spend what, like, more money on and replenishing. And in wardrobe curation, it's not about buying, it's not about having 10 gray sweater, you know, it's not about having 10 uh, black blazers. It's not about that. It's not more, it's more. It's about really thinking about buying stuff that looks good on you, that is high quality, that you could incorporate and you could mix and match, you know, something that will last you for years to come. Like I said, when I go buy stuff, I always think about, I need to have a minimum of it being in my closet for five years. If it doesn't sit in my closet for five years, I don't want it. So, um, that's the way you need to think about it. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Versity quality is what to look for. Exactly some brands are not my body type. This is what I say, like, there are 12 body types, you know, I mean, there are 12 silhouettes that designers design around. And if you are using Kiwi for styling, and I, and I said, said it before, Kiwi, so David Kiwi is a stylist. That's what, that's who he, he is. Like when he wrote the book, he was a stylist, I think in the eighties or nineties or something like that. He was a stylist. So when he did the Kiwi, it was based actually on another system by these two women. So it's a styling book, you know, how to dress for your body type. And it's taking in the factor of your hair color, your face feature, your height proportions, your girth, all this stuff, right? Factor it in. So Kibi is styling and silhouettes is what designers use to design clothes. So that's the difference between the two. In, and I know that there are so many misunderstanding about how to use silhouettes and how to use Kiwi. And I've done two YouTube videos explaining it. Um, but I think I'm going to update it sometime this year based on a lot of the comments that you guys have said to make it a lot more simpler and clearer than I thought it was very clear because I took six months to do those two videos. But I think that there were still some, uh, some questions 
So I'm going to take in all the factors. So if you still have questions about it, drop a comment in those videos. I will factor it in when I update the video this year. Um, so different way to look at what one is buying. Yes. So when you are shopping, again, I said that there's six criteria that you need to go with. And I've discussed it in this um, presentation. But if you miss any of it, this video, again, it plays um, it's going to play next Wednesday. So I do the live every Friday and then the following Wednesday, it will stream, it will go onto YouTube. Um, so if you miss anything, it will replay on YouTube. Um, cause I want to make sure that the information is accessible cause I'm giving you all like really practical sound advice. What I think is very practical sound advice because this is what I do. So I'm not you know, preaching to you something that I don't do myself. And this is a way I'm able to buy like high ticket items. And this is a way I'm able to curate the, the styles that I want, you know, and this is a way I have clothes for, um, occasions that I need in my life. That's practical to my lifestyle. So I cannot tell you what you need to get. Only I could give you practical, you know, guidelines and how to curate your wardrobe, you know, and yeah. Um, so, and you're welcome, you know, um, always feel free to drop any comments. So I think this is going to be the last comment I'm going to address. Capsule wardrobe. Yes, preach it. So I want to also emphasize that capsule wardrobe isn't this, you know, buy this many tops, buy this many, you know, bottoms. There's seven, there's 27 categories. I show you what it is in some of the videos earlier on in TikTok, and there's also a video on YouTube about, you know, the 27 styles, but because personal style, look, if you're not a dress person, if I tell you to buy dresses, you're going to be like, Jody, you're crazy. I don't wear dresses. Why are you tell me to wear dresses or buy dresses? So if you're not into dresses, then don't buy dresses. You might want to buy more pants. You might want to buy more skirts, things like that, you know, and if you don't like to wear jeans, so I'll, I'll give you a very good example. Anna Winter has not worn pants since the 90s. You would hard, you'd be hard pressed to find her in any pants nowadays. She wears a lot of dresses and skirts. You will see it all the time, you know. So if I told her to go buy jeans, she'll be like, Jody, you're just crazy. Why would I buy jeans? Do you not know my personal style? Do you, have you not seen my style? So that's the thing, like, you need to buy the things in your capsule wardrobe that fits into your personal style, that makes sense to you and what you want to wear. Because if you happen to love jeans, but you don't like wearing trousers, for me to tell you to buy trousers and, ne and neglect telling you to buy the jeans, it would be very silly for you because you'd be like, what are you talking about? I want to wear jeans. But if you hate jeans and I, and I tell you to buy jeans, you're going to say the same thing. If you hate wearing dresses, I tell you buy dresses, you're going to say like, you're crazy. I'm not going to listen to you. But if you happen to love dresses and I tell you to buy pants and you don't wear pants, you're going to say the same thing. So the capsule wardrobe is only the pieces that make sense, all the styles. Let's just say that you love wearing sweaters and you hate button downs. So you wouldn't buy button downs, but you will buy a lot of sweaters. Um, you like to wear uh, tank tops like the knitted tank tops. If I tell you to buy a silk camisole, but you hate silk camisoles, you wouldn't buy it. So this is a thing that you need to do. Your capsule wardrobe are things that you wear that make sense to you, that you can mix and match together to create multiple outfits. That's easy. So I've talked about this before, is your style of dressing should be a uniform of how you would pair outfits together, right? So you might have a very massive style aesthetic. So you like statement style. So chances are you're going to be grabbing either like a very bold top or a bold pair of pants or even a bold dress. So things that kind of make you have that bold personality because that is your style. But if I tell you to go wear a beige blazer, you're going to say to me, you're crazy. That's not my style. You know, I like both styles. So these are things that you, you have to factor in. I talk about style aesthetics. 
I talk about, you know, fitting, you know, finding things. I talk about colors. All the series that I'm up episode six right now, I'm telling you is practical advice to give you so you could wear the stuff that you want to wear. Again, I say when it comes to fashion, I could give you guidelines. I cannot tell you exactly what to do unless I have a session with you, unless I get to know you and your lifestyle, what you like to wear. So I've done, I've done um, styling sessions, you know, with different people with different lifestyles and, you know, like all the, the different people that I've done the, the session with, they all have, so far everyone has a very different kind of job. I've done like a grad student, I've done like, you know, um, I, um, someone who is in corporate, I've done someone who is a DJ. So there are these various different jobs, you know, and what they wear in their job and their lifestyle is different. And they're also like, what they prefer to wear and things like that is also different. So that's why like, when I talk about, you know, one-on-one -on -one style sessions and things like that, and I know some... Okay, it was very bold, you know, I think I know, I'm not sure if any of you follow me, because I think I, back in November I was sick, so I kind of answered this person's question about her, her kiwi. I knew immediately, like, she misdiagnosed, like, her kiwi, and I told her exactly what she, what she was, and she was surprised, because she submitted me multiple videos, I kind of just gave her, like, some free help, and then she's asking me, like, for a style consultation. I cannot spend hours because, you know, again, like, it's my time and it's my knowledge, you know, so I would have to actually spend time. Like, I cannot give three hours to give you a styling session, you know, things like that. So that's why I say, like, I really actually have to know you, your personal style. There's a whole process of my styling session that will help you. And, the, and in my styling session, I also give you, you know, a report of what you need to do, like guidelines that you will, you can use, you know, after you're done with my session, you know, that you could, practical advice that you could incorporate into your everyday life, that, you know, in the long run, you could use it as a styling guide. Um, so anyway, uh, okay, I think that that's it. If there's anything else, um, so this session will go into youtube next wednesday and i will be back next friday with uh episode seven so i will see you then thank you for joining me bye